Democratic gubernatorial candidate Stacey Abrams brought her bus tour to Milledgeville on Wednesday, October 15th. She attacked her Republican opponent, Brian Kemp, on a number of issues, including public safety. When my opponent talks about public safety, he forgets to mention in his fine print that he doesn't believe that we should give a living wage to our law enforcement. He says that's the county's problem. That's the city's problem. I say if we have law enforcement people putting their lives on the line, that's our responsibility. She also attacked Kemp for his support of a so-called Religious Freedom Act that opponents say would legalize discrimination against LGBTQ people. I'm also running because I know that we have to have a leader who believes in all of us, not someone who promises that one of his first acts of office will be legalizing discrimination against the LGBTQ community in the state of Georgia. Abrams spoke to an enthusiastic crowd of supporters, but a group of protesters also turned out. The protesters expressed strong disapproval of Abrams, particularly for receiving out-of-state funding for her campaign. They were lukewarm about Kemp, but strongly supported the Republican Party. One protester said he just wanted to keep the state red. Abrams touted her business experience. I'm a business leader who's helped hire, create, and retain thousands of jobs across the state of Georgia. I'm a civic leader, I'm a business leader, and I'm a political leader who blocked the highest tax increase in Georgia history. And if I can do that when I'm in the morning, imagine what I can do when I'm the CEO. Abrams urged people to vote early. We have a pattern. We vote on election day. We know what time we vote. We know when we're going to go vote. But the thing of it is, life has a way of interfering. And I don't need life to interfere on November 6th. So from October 15th to November 2nd, I need you all to put life on the line and move things forward and go and cast the ballot. Polls indicate the race for governor is close. We'll find out how close on election night. For GC360, this is Morgan Simpson. Georgia College students enjoyed an, an extended fall break last week, all because of Hurricane Michael. We wondered what effect that had on students and faculty. GC360's Jack Hedinger found out. Last week, Georgia College canceled all classes from Wednesday to Friday amid the hurricane scare. We walked around campus to talk to students and faculty to see their opinion on the matter. As a music major, you have to have like 18 credit hours a semester. So like, it was nice to have that break to just like collect yourself, sleep, get caught up on any work, stuff like that. Well, my initial reaction when the break was extended, I was like so happy, everyone was happy, and I thought the break overall was very refreshing because the week I had before that was very stressful. While having more days off may have excited most of the student body, it may have added more stress and work to be made up. Like, it didn't push me too far to where like I'd be super far behind in the classes, but it did put me back like a grade or two, so I mean, it was not beneficial in that way, but like the break itself was still needed. Yeah, I think the backlash was that everything was pushed back and now teachers kind of want to cram things in a little bit. For the students that had classes canceled on Wednesday and Thursday, they may have a lot of catching up that they have to do the rest of the semester, so that could have had a negative impact. And I don't think it's going to have any true effect. Uh, I can collapse some things later on. Uh, but there was a sufficient space in the schedule already for me to man manipulate what I wanted to take care of. With everyone hurrying home, it left the campus empty on days that are usually filled with people. By Wednesday afternoon, Thursday, like the storm was gone from Milledgeville. So I'm not saying, you know, oh, I wish we had school because I enjoyed the break, but probably canceling it for a whole week was a little over the top. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 it's probably better to be safe than sorry. So, you know, it, as long as we can uh, catch up, you know, one class is not going to end, end the world, and, and we certainly would want to avoid the tragedy of actually having a hurricane hit. On the other hand, you say, well, see, we shouldn't have done that because, you know, it wasn't that bad. So, you know, you can, you can understand why they make those kind of decisions, a little bit on the side of being more cautious. So how did you feel about the campus closure? Hop on one of our social media sites and let us know. For GC360, I'm Jack Hettinger. After the break, we have everything Deep Roots for you. Who's playing at the concert this year? Yeah, Stay tuned. I didn't know that was in a small town of Elmira, New York, a boy was born into an all-American family. The odds of him achieving his dream in the fashion industry? One in 23 million. 
the odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 68. I am Tommy Hilfiger, and my family is affected by autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. And I'm Gabrielle Duchateau. Before we get into entertainment here in the Milledgeville community, we have to address the breaking news. Ariana Grande and Pete Davidson broke off their engagement. Ariana Grande and Pete Davidson split less than a week ago. The two are said to still be in love, but it is not the right time to be engaged. There are various rumors going around about the split, but I think it's time that we give them some space before assuming anything. I mean... I can't wait to see an SNL skit about this. You know Pete's going to do something. You know he's going to do the breaking news and talk all about it and mm -hmm. hopefully get, tell us a little bit more of what went down. Yeah, I know. It was really rushed what had happened, you know. It's true. They spent, what, four, three weeks dating and then got engaged? Engaged. Pretty, pretty sudden. Pretty Most sudden. Most people don't really do it sudden. that way, but interesting. They decided to and sadly didn't get to work out, but hey, maybe yeah. she needs some time. Yeah, but hey. Ariana has gone through so much this year, and it's just a reminder to always take care of yourself and mental health first. Speaking of that, Milledgeville has the perfect event to take your mind off all the stress. It's Deep Root Season. DC 360's Sarah Allen has a preview. October 20th will be the 15th annual Deep Roots Festival here in Milledgeville, Georgia. Well, it's a day full of lots of activity. We have over 50 artist market vendors. We have all the stores and restaurants that are open downtown. Um, there's a car show. We have two kid zones, which are for not college kids, younger kids. So um, if you have younger siblings, they could come. But um, we'll also have a food truck alley. And then in the, starting at 2.45, we have music at the main stage here. Um, that will go till midnight, and that's usually one of the you know crowded, most crowded times. It's a big day for Milledgeville. I think it, it fills up not just downtown. All the hotels are booked, all the gas stations do well. You know, even the restaurants outside of downtown are booked or packed because people leave to go eat and come back since it's just so busy downtown. So it's a really good day for us. We're selling the Deep Roots tickets, and they're six dollars each. Um, and the city is putting it on, so it's cash only. But it's a really great opportunity. Um, we're bringing in a lot of business by doing it. They're really cool this year. They're very um, patriotic. They're red, white, and blue, um, and they have these little like safety clips on them, so they're very secure. Buy tickets early for six dollars, or at the gate for eight dollars. Businesses in Milledgeville have been preparing for Deep Roots on Saturday. It's just going to be extremely busy as it always is. I mean, tons of people all coming in and out of town, alumni coming in. Uh, we just expect to be slam packed with people all day. We have our big nights here, like Wing Night is a hit, Trivia is the same night. Um, first Friday with Martin Magic Man, but those are nothing compared to what Deep Roots does. I mean, it's just, there's so many more people in town and they're all right here in the downtown vicinity that they just come in. There are many aspects of Deep Roots that Georgia College students love. I'm just so excited to see all the people that are coming in for town, all the great music, um, you know, all the great art tents that are around. It's just a really good atmosphere for Deep Roots. I love it. Reporting for GC360, I'm Sarah Allen. A new kind of cultural cuisine has emerged on the streets of downtown Milledgeville. With its massive and colorful murals, this restaurant hopes to draw plenty of customers. I went to see what the buzz was all about. Have you been wandering up and down Hancock Street, searching for Gringo's, but just can't seem to find it? Gringo's is no longer. The restaurant now is under new management and goes by the name Bollywood Tacos. Welcome to Bollywood Tacos! 
The name comes from the new owner's love for old Bollywood films. He wanted to bring a flair of different culture to downtown Milledgeville. Like owner uh, Deepak Kumar, who owns Metropolis, which I'm sure everyone knows about. Um, he's actually from India, um, the Punjabi uh, region, and so he just loves Bollywood films so much, and he really wanted to give like a flair of Indian culture for like downtown Millie, and so that's where Bollywood comes through, and so uh, yeah, he loves it. He loves it so much. We do too. Eye catching murals cover the wall of the restaurant. They encompass the mix of cultures that Bollywood Tacos represents and were painted by students and local artists. A lot of our art uh, was done by the uh, Georgia College Art Department, specifically Valerie uh, Aranda. And, uh, and her students came in and did all this lovely work. Um, she supervised them, but um, I know this chalk wall was done by Sarah Bergen, so uh, she was super proud of that. And uh, a lot of the art here is very local, which we're proud of here. We want to give them something to do and kind of have a local flair about it. The food at Bollywood Tacos fuses mainly Indian and Mexican cuisine, but they also offer food inspired by other Asian cultures, such as a bulgogi Korean barbecue taco. This is my favorite taco, and it's called the Beach Country, and it has fried chicken, peach salsa, bacon, and pimento cheese. This mixture creates an exciting and colorful plate of fresh food. We have fresh ingredients. Um, when you have a look at the food, you're going to see it really pops with a lot of color, a lot of pizzazz. We take food presentation very seriously here. Will that be enough for Bollywood Tacos to succeed? The competition is tough in downtown Millersville, and we'll be watching. Coming up, our sports team has the latest updates for you. Stay with us. Get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And I'm Herndon Lee. Georgia College hosted a tailgate for the women's soccer team at Bobcat Field on West Campus last night. That's Wednesday, October 17th for those who weren't watching live. The turnout was impressive. More than 700 fellow Bobcats came out to show their school spirit and support the team at the event. There was free food, games, and prizes. The tailgate tour is a new idea from Georgia College Athletics in efforts to get students to come out to the games. I'd say it's working. The kick for the Cure game began at 7 p.m. against Clayton State, and the Bobcats won 2-0. to The lead-up to the game was particularly special. Let's listen. The team surrounded an American flag during the national anthem performance, which came from the NCAA office in Indianapolis and is used at the national championships all over the country. Pretty cool. The team encouraged everyone to wear pink as this game was dedicated to breast cancer awareness. The team members dressed in pink uniforms to show their support. With the win, the Lady Bobcats are now 9-3-2 this season with five games left, three of which are home. The team previously tied their game against Flaggers 0-0 October 6th and lost the game to Columbus State this past Monday 
Senior Bobcat goalkeeper Ashley Graham made six saves in the loss. Coming up, we have a huge guest star joining us for our serious news reporter. You guessed it, it's our very own president of the United States, Donald J. Trump, will be here, right here. But before that, something a little more believable. No plans for tonight, we have the concert for you to attend. Stay with us. I think someone at my friend's school has this thing called autism. My friend's brother's son has autism. My neighbor's son has autism. My son has autism. Autism is getting closer to home. Today, one in 68 children is diagnosed with autism. That's about a 30% increase in two years. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. interested in supporting awesome local bands and our community? If you are, come out to Buffington's tonight for the Rock the House Benefit Concert. The scheduled headliners will be Jerry 22 and the Orange Constant. The event goes from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. Tickets are $3 in advance and $5 at the door. Proceeds will go to GCSUs in Baldwin County's Habitat for Humanity. I understand Adrian has someone very special for us right now. Our week of learning, but it blew in a very special guest. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you President Donald Trump. So President Trump, we'll start off with, a, with some mildly political questions and then move to more lighthearted questions. Um, and then we'll start answer some questions from the public. Is that all right with you? Absolutely, that's fine. Thank all righty. So let's get started. President Trump, everyone wants to know, what are your future plans for running this country? Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on the show. You look very beautiful tonight, as I'm sure you already know that. You should be very proud of yourself. But I'm going to make our allies pay their fair share. Why are we defending countries like Saudi Arabia, who makes a billion dollars a day? We're giving them billions and billions of dollars every single year, and we get nothing. Why aren't they giving us 25% of what they're making? It's a joke. But we're going to be leading with strength, and we're going to be a respected nation once again. Mm. So what are your top three concerns for this country right now? Well, first of all, China is killing us on trade. I mean, if, if you look at what they're doing, they're stealing our intellectual property. They're stealing a lot of our trade secrets. And hey, I have tremendous respect for the Chinese people. I mean, you can respect someone who's beaten the heck out of you, but they are beating the heck out of this country. I want to now talk actually a little bit about illegal immigration. And everyone says, oh, Donald, it's so controversial. But it's illegal. OK, it's not controversial, it's illegal. And then I also want to talk about our infrastructure. I actually just flew into LaGuardia last night in New York, and it is like flying into a third world country. And if we want really true economic growth, we have to rebuild our infrastructure. We have no choice. Hmm. So why hasn't the border wall been built yet? Well, because Mexico hasn't given me the check yet. You know, I've, I told them, I said that Mexico is going to pay for the wall, and I said that. 
And when they refused, they said that they, I said that the wall just got 10 feet taller, and it did, believe me. So as soon as they give me the check, the wall will be complete, believe me. So what gives you the most pressure being the president? I would say the swamp, the swamp in Washington, D.C. You know, we have a lot of political hacks who are, who are career politicians, who are all talk, no action. They will not get anything done. They don't know how to make America great again. They, have, they don't even have a chance. But that, would, I would have to say, gives me the most pressure because it's very difficult to work with these individuals who are so stubborn. Mm. So let's get more personal. What made you want to become president? Well, if you remember decades ago, I was actually on Oprah, and she asked me if I would ever run for president. And I said no, because really I didn't feel like I had the obligation to do it. But I got so sick and tired of seeing what was happening with this country being ripped off by other countries, really being taken advantage of, and being just totally destroyed by our career politicians. So I never wanted to totally rule it out. It's not that I wanted to do it. It's just I feel like I really had no choice. I had no choice. Ooh. So as president, what are your strengths and your weaknesses? Well, I think I'm a very charismatic person, and I tell people things like it is, and I think that's a very important strength. But I really don't believe that I have a whole lot of weaknesses. I mean, Melania tells me that I tweet too much, but I think that's actually debatable. I don't think I tweet enough, to be quite honest with you. I don't think that's a, I don't think that's a weakness. Oh, OK. So out of all the insults that you've heard about yourself, what are the best? Well, I have to say, Senator Rubio hit my hands. Are these small hands? I mean, I don't think they're small hands. And he suggested that if they're small, something else must be small. I guarantee there's no problem. I can guarantee that, believe me. <laughs> would you say that being president is your dream job? And if not, what would it be? Absolutely not. No, and as I mentioned before, I, had no ch I, I really had no choice to do this. This was not a dream job. I had to do it. My dream job was actually what I was doing before. You know, I built a tremendous company. It's worth probably over $10 billion, some estimates say. That was my dream job. And maybe I'll go back to doing that after I'm president, but for the time being, I have to be here. I really do not have a choice. Mm. So why do you tweet so often? Well, look, you know, I have over 100 million followers on Twitter, and I think it's a great way to reach out to them and, and provide them with accurate information. You know, a lot of the media is so dishonest. I like you guys. You're actually quite fair. But a lot of the dishonest media makes things totally inaccurate, and they do a very poor job of representing what I actually say. So I think it's a great way to combat the fake news. Okay. And now a few questions from our students. <clears throat> Mathematics major Tim L. asks, why does everyone hate you? Well, I think that's actually not a very valid question because, look, I got almost 100 million votes. That's a lot of votes. So, and at the same time, that clearly says that people like me, they like what I have to say, and that's why people like me are president and not Hillary or Lion Ted Cruz. Okay. Psychology major Kaylee R. asks, who is paying for the wall that you are building? Well, as I mentioned before, Mexico is going to pay for that wall 100%. They have no choice. And if they don't write me a check, then you know what? We're just going to tariff them, and we're going to tax them like crazy on all the cars that they bring into the U.S. And actually, we just signed the United States-Mexico trade agreement. It's a tremendous trade deal, much better than NAFTA. NAFTA was a total disaster for our country. But we're going to get Mexico to pay for the wall one way or another. No choice. Okay. Pre-nursing major Sarah M. asks, did you really sexually assault those women before the beginning of your pregnancy? No, I did not. Presidency? No, I did not. And I, I apologize for the words that I said. It was what I would say would be locker room talk. I'm not proud of it. I'm embarrassed by it. But if you look at what I did, they were words. And if you look at something like what Bill Clinton did, those were actions. His were much, much worse. Communications major Tess W. asks, why does Kanye like you so much? Are you two like best friends now? Look, Kanye is a great, great guy. He's a great friend of mine. But, but look, I have many friends all over the world. You know, I travel all over the world to, for work. I, at least I did, but not a little bit now. But I have friends all over the world. And Kanye is a great guy. I'll invite him to the White House again. But he's not, I wouldn't say, a best friend. I wouldn't say that. OK, well, thank you so much for coming on to the Absolutely. show. Absolutely, thank we you. We really appreciate it. It was an honor. Thank you. Thank you. We would all like to thank President Trump for coming on the show this week. Please stay tuned for another, please stay tuned next week for another great interview with none other than Senator Bernie Sanders. What do you guys want to hear from Bernie? Please tweet us at GC360 News. My name is Adrian Gardner, your serious news reporter, and that's all I have for you this week. And now back to the news desk.
Well, that's all for this edition of GC360. We look forward to seeing everyone at Deep Roots this Saturday. When we're not on air, we keep you up to date on our social media pages and our website, gc360news.com. I'm Kat Capstick. And I'm Emmett Schindler. Always available to you, GC360, where news comes full circle. To all kids, don't write a song about your fiance until you get married. I think, I think just I think don't generally write songs about the people you're with.